one of the things as creators we think about is how do we sustain for a long period of time because people may get bored. There's many different ways to talk about this. First of all, I once took a two and a half year gap of producing any content. Two and a half years. So for five years I did wine content from 2006 to 2011 and then, it, and then in 2014 I started the Ask Gary B show. That's a long gap. So I think a lot of times we beat each other up, you beat yourself up for not producing content. I'm potentially one of the most prolific content creators of the last decade and I once took almost three years where I made almost no content. So I hope that gives everyone a sense of relief that if you have a bad week or even a bad month, it doesn't mean the end of your content career. That's number one. Number two, notice what I came back and did. After five years of doing wine content and not doing content for three years, the content pillar that I decided to do was a QA and a format. Why did I do that? Because I needed the audience to be a contributor to the content creation. I think one of the great mistakes that a lot of people make is they don't incorporate their audience as a potential starter to creative. It is an amazing training wheels, set up, chess move, putting you halfway home. Incorporating your audience to being a starting point to more content is something more people need to do. Q and A's, answering questions, interactions. Um, And then finally, I'm a very big believer in what I do with DRock. Like filming your day to day is an incredible way to scale content. The other thing I did was I did a ton of podcasts and shows that had very small audiences just to be on the receiving end of questions so that I would have content. So literally DMing small podcasts and saying hey, you know, if you'd like to interview me, and you know, as you're evolving through your careers, that's a good get for a small podcast, so it's good for them, but it's also good for you because you can post, produce the creative. And Q, what's amazing about Q&A is the questions take you to places you won't take yourself. So those are some things to think about. I view that content is the oxygen that creates awareness around what you're doing. So to your point, if you stop creating to do something, you in essence are turning off the oxygen of what you're doing. So the reason I have continuously content created even though I've gotten remarkably busier in my time is because I agree with that. I think once you stop creating, you become less vulnerable. Oprah Winfrey's businesses are not as impactful today as they were a decade ago because she doesn't have her show. That's just real life. We, me included, must really understand the art part of underpriced attention for our businesses. This is all fancy jargon for one simple thing. The single thing that can change the majority of businesses in this room is an obnoxious, and I mean obnoxious, commitment to organic social media creative as an opportunity to take a advantage of the TikTokification of social media that will be the next half decade. In the next half decade, the TikTokification of all social networks is the biggest opportunity for everybody in this room. What is happening and will continue to happen is these platforms are going to reward the creative, not your ability to build a following. This is exciting for everybody in the room if you heard me loud and clear because many people here have not made the commitment to amassing community as a personal brand or even for their brand. When I tell you that you could have never made a piece of content in your life and tomorrow for your business, your product or you, however you wanna play it, both preferably, that you can post your first post on a YouTube Shorts or a TikTok and if you know what you're doing, a lot of good things can happen for your business is exciting. The problem is it's daunting for a lot of people. A lot of people in this room like math. It's predictable, it's black and white. They hate art. It's gray as shit and you have no idea what the fuck is going on. The problem is the math will continue to get commoditized and will be leveraged against you 
and the art is your moat. Branding, instead of math-based digital sales, and marketing and content and creativity are a battleground that this room must take much more seriously than it has in the last decade because it will be the protection to allow you to have the margins you'll need to sustain your business because what's actively happening is the math is being run to take all your margin. Let me say it nice and slow. The math is being run to take your margin when you don't sell product within your own self. When you sell somewhere else, the data is being collected. This is good. They deserve it. You brought no customers to the table. They brought all of them. I just need you to know the opportunity in front of you. What does this mean? It means a couple of things. One, this TikTokification of all social is a huge opportunity for many reasons. One, back to how many of you try many different products, I would argue virality in social, based on these algos, is the greatest insight to what your next product should be. The concept of guessing your next product is crazy in a world where you can literally create samples at scale, create content against it, and get incredible qualitative feedback if it's interesting. Not the math, but the comments and the insights at scale from free distribution because of organic virality because that's where social is going. This is a profound shift in social at a time when social is hitting scale of complete and utter consumption patterns besides streaming services. Besides gaming and streaming services, the attention of society is living within these 10 platforms. This is a really hope the tone tenor that I'm bringing to it, which is a little more serious than my style normally, is landing for some of you because the stakes are so high because it's pure offense. Again, in simplest terms, I genuinely believe that every single business in this room needs to go home and substantially, and I'm talking two, four, 30X their creative output per day. What we're talking about is something everyone should fully understand, which is social media is where brand is built. Social media is driving an extraordinary amount of sales. It's also changing in a way that it hasn't for 15 years. The reason I'm personally so excited about it is in 2006, my life changed because I took all of my savings, all of them, and I invested in three companies. Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. Obviously, I'm rich now. But the moral of the story is not that. The moral is when I invested in Tumblr, I called my brother AJ and I said, Tumblr is gonna be the biggest one of these three. Thank God I wasn't making videos back then. <laughs> Tumblr did sell for a billion dollars to Yahoo. But let me tell you why I thought Tumblr was gonna be the biggest in 2007. Even back then, there was something in my spidey senses that understood the social media social graph was following each other and because it started young and I watched my brother go through it because he was the first class in college and by the time we even started VaynerMedia, half the people he was following, he wasn't friends with, they had different interests already. I understood there was vulnerability in it just being about who you followed. But Tumblr, I'm 46, so for the 30 year olds, 32 year olds in here, 35 year olds in here that remember Tumblr's rise when they were in junior high, Tumblr was based on what you were interested in. And I saw stickiness there that I really was dumbfounded by. That has now been manifested. If you look back and you Google my name with the word musically, you'll see four or five years ago me screaming at the top of my lungs that you need to get on musically when it was, I mean I thought I was gonna go to fucking jail because it was only 13 year old girls on there dancing. <laughs> I remember my team's like, you sure you wanna post this? I'm like, Fuck it. 
but I knew. I knew what I was looking at with Musical.ly really mattered to everybody in this room and was going to at some point. Obviously TikTok bought it. It is now what is TikTok.